In this video, I'll be introducing the definition of the fractional derivative. If you want some more intuition and some basic formulas about the fractional derivative instead of just the definition, go watch Dr. Prime's video on those. They are very good. Okay, so what we start off with is just repeated integration because as you'll see, they'll mu they're much easier to simplify. So what we say is that we give a name to integration. We call it JAF of X. Okay, and that's just integrating from A to X, F of T DT. Okay, it's that simple. And so the reason for introducing this new notation is so that we can just simply write J A to the N F of X instead of writing n different integrals, which is, I'll write out, is going to be the integral from a to x, to the integral from a to t1, all the way up until the integral from a until t n minus 1, f of t n, d t n, all the way down until d t1. Okay, so we have n different integrals right here. Integrate it n times, give it this simpler name. And what we're going to be using is something called the Cauchy's repeated integration formula. And that's going to be that this right here is actually going to be equal to 1 over n minus 1 factorial times a, the integral from a to x of f of t times x minus t to the n minus 1 dt. Okay, so it's so much simpler than writing out all these integrals, and it can actually be extended very easily using the gamma function, which is right there, right in your site. And then we can get fractional integrals. So what we're going to do is we're going to use induction, okay? So we start off with the base case, n equals 1. Okay, so we're going to have j1a f of x which is very simple, is going to be the integral from a to x of f of t dt, which is trivially equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 factorial times the integral from a to x of f of t times x minus t to 1 minus 1 dt, which I just plugged in 1 into this formula. And that's going to be a 0. 0 factorial is 1. 1 over 1, 1. That's going to be a 0. So that becomes something to the 0. That's 1. That goes away, that goes away, and we're done. That's the proof. Now I'm going to prove that n implies n plus 1. Okay? So we could have, say, j n plus 1. j to the n plus 1 of f of x. It's going to be defined as the integral from a to x of the integral from a until t1 all the way up until the integral from a to tn f of tn plus 1 d t n plus 1 all the way down until dt1. And then up here I'm going to go ahead and use the fact that we have induction here. This right here is a series of n integrals integrating at n times of f of t, basically. And so this right here is actually going to be the integral from a to x, because we're not including that because that'd be n plus 1 integrals, of 1 over n minus 1 factorial times the integral from a to t1, because that's the x we have. then times x is t1 minus t to the n minus 1 f of t dt, and then d t1. Okay, that's just straight from the definition. And now what we're going to do is use the fact that the derivative in respect to x of the simpler 1 over n factorial times a to the x, x minus t to the n, times f of t dt, which by the Leibniz rule is going to be 1 over n factorial times a to x. Move that derivative inside 
x minus t to the n, f of t, dt, yielding 1 over n factorial times the integral from a to x of, that n just gets moved down, this becomes an n minus 1, that becomes f of t still, the n and the n minus 1, n factorial becomes an n minus 1 factorial, and then we're left with this which is exactly what we have right here, except x is t1. And so we can move this down to become the integral from a to x of the derivative in respect to t1, move the 1 over n factorial outside of the integral from a until t1 of x, which is t1 minus t to the n, times f of t dt, then we're doing dt1. But look at that. This derivative in respect to t1 is inside this integral, which is in respect to t1. And so that derivative just gets, gets gotten rid of. And so we're left with 1 over n factorial times the integral from a until x, except now we don't have t1. And instead, we have x. You can work out the logistics a little bit if you're confused, but that's how it works out. And so that's the proof, because right there is exactly what we wanted. OK, so now that we have this proof, we're going to use it to our advantage to extend the integral to fractional powers. So we could have j alpha a of f of x, okay? But first, what I'm going to do is just make this an n again, use the Cauchy formula, and just substitute in for n minus 1 factorial gamma of n. Okay, the rest is the same. And so that gamma extends us into all positive real numbers that we have j alpha a of f of x is going to be defined to be 1 over gamma of alpha times the integral from a to x of x minus t to the alpha minus 1 f of t dt. It's as simple as that. And now what we go ahead and do, as you might expect to do, is going to be d alpha a f of x is going to be equal to the negative integral like this. But guess what? Gamma of alpha isn't defined for negative integers. So this won't work. So what we actually have to do is do something like picking between 0 and 1 what we do is say that d alpha a f of x, we have to move it out of the negatives. OK. Because this is between 0 and 1, 1 minus alpha is also between 0 and 1. And so I could just do the derivative, the normal derivative, of j 1 minus alpha a f of x. Why? Because this derivative should m subtract 1 from this integral. It removes one of the integrals. That's what the derivative in the integral are from the fundamental theorem of calculus. And so this intuitively would be j to the minus alpha a f of x. And so what we do is we say that if alpha is between k minus 1 and k between consecutive integers, d alpha a of f of x is simply going to be defined to be the derivative, the kth derivative of j k minus alpha a f of x. Because anything else wouldn't allow it to be positive. Perhaps Dr. Pyam will now make videos proving the things he claimed using this definition.